Okay, welcome back. So now we're here in Marvel's Designer, and when you open it up, it should look a little something like this. Um, it has a default avatar and a default pattern here for you to look at, and it may seem intimidating, but don't worry about it. We're not even going to use these. <laughs> so um, let's start off by configuring your Marvel's Designer real quick. If you look over here in the 2D window, up here on the top bar, if you only have these icons on the top of it, then you need to enable your 2D pattern tools. Sometimes when you install Marvel Designer, it doesn't always install, I mean, enable the 2D pattern tools. You just have to check them by default. But once you check them, they'll always pop up whenever you open Marvel Designer. So what you want to do is click on this bar that's right here, and select the 2D pattern toolbar. And it'll give you all the tools you need to start working on your marvelous uh, patterns. So what we want to do is um, get rid of first get rid of this pattern, and then import our slink body into uh, the workspace. So we're going to first go File and then New, and we're going to get rid of the default pattern. Then we're going to go to File, Open, Avatar. And um, we're going to look for the OBJ that we export. Ignore this one. That was something I did for somebody who got confused. Um, and we're going to hit that. And when it clicks on our, when we clicked on our uh, body, you'll notice it gives you this little menu that's asking, how do you scale it? So we're just going to press this little box here that says M, and then hit OK. And then we have our Slink avatar the way we had it in Blender. So that's how you bring in your body and um, you can start making your clothes. Now if you've already watched my other tutorials on how to m use Marvelous Designer then you really don't need to watch this video. The process is pretty much the same. There's nothing fancy you need to do. This is just a part of the video for people who are brand new and um, have absolutely no idea how to use it. So I'm going to go over the very basics of basics and teach you how to make um, the outfit that we were using in the intro, the t-shirt and a pair of pants. Because once you learn how to make a pair of pants and a t-shirt, you can pretty much make anything in uh, Marvelous Designer. Okay, so now that we got those other people out, it's just us newcomers. So I'm going to teach you guys how to use Marvelous Designer. So the thing you're going to need to take your attention to is, uh, no wait, very basics, very basics, can't jump. <laughs> Alright, so Marvel Designer works with two windows really. Uh, the 3D window where it has your 3D model and your patterns when you have, when you get to that point. And the 2D window where you'll be designing your patterns in. Uh, basically, if you have any kind of skill with making sewing patterns, then you can use those pattern making skills in this program because that's what it does by default. But if you don't have any pattern making skills, that you can just draw the shape of your garment and then sew it together. Um, to make a pattern, you'll need to use the pattern making tools. And that is these buttons that are up here. The tool you'll be using the most is the polygon tool, the create a polygon tool. And this will allow you to create any kind of shape you want as long as you return back to the first dot. Dot. Although these are dots are technically called points, so you can make any shape as long as you return back to the first point. So I'm going to use this and select it. Oh, this white arrow allows us to select the pattern. So you'll see we'll be using that. Um, next to it is the Create Rectangle tool, which allows you to make Insta rectangles or squares without trying to have to use the polygon tool <laughs> and create squares. I tried. And, uh -huh. <laughs> so we use this and delete those. If you don't want a pattern, like if there's a pattern here that you want to get rid of, all you have to do is just click on it and then press the delete button and you can get rid of it that way. Uh, next to the Create quit create rectangle is the create a circle which allows you to do the impossible the task of creating quick little circles if you want um, without trying to use the polygon tool to try to create a circle because that's like almost impossible <laughs> um, so that's how you create the basic shapes in here let's get rid of those uh, we're going to create a basic triangle I mean basic squares rectangle so I can show you uh, the internal tools. Now next to these creating uh, your pattern tools are internal tools and this allows you to create shapes inside your uh, pattern, your default pattern. Um, this is good for 
Um, they work pretty much the same as the regular tools, except for you don't need to return to the first point. See, I can just create a line inside this rectangle and stop it, just double click and stop it. Whereas with the polygon tool, if we try to do the same thing, it would just go on waiting for us to go back to the first point. The internal tools are here so that you can create things like um, elastic and folds in your pattern as well as, well, if you're using the internal square and internal circle, you can use it to tear holes and stuff inside your pattern. I'm going to turn on the sync button so you can see what I mean by that. So let's click on this internal square and I'm right click and I'm going to press the button uh, convert to hole and you can see we now have holes and stuff inside of our pattern. Next to the internal tools is the dart tool and it works just like darts do um, in real life. It allows you to tailor your garment to make it tighter or more uh, fitted. Um, or you could just use it like I used to use it and just as a quick hole in your <laughs> quick hole in your pattern uh, button. So I'm just going to click this and get rid of it. Ow. Um, these tools over here are your manipulation tools. So I'm going to put in another square so we can show you that. Uh, this tool is your edit pattern one. You're going to be using that the most. It allows you to manipulate your pattern by like, shrinking it down, making it bigger, clicking on it to move it over. Uh, you can use it to click on your points and you can change and edit your pattern using this. The black arrow that's next to it allows you to grab your pattern as a whole. So if we had like, let's see, more multiple squares or something here and we just want to grab it, we can just do this with it. And if you hold down shift, you can select multiple patterns at once. Um, it also allows you to stretch your patterns and stuff at once as well as rotate them or so like this. So it's a good tool to play around with. Another thing next to that is the edit curvature tool. It allows you to add a curve to your pattern. If you need something to be curvy or so, you can totally use this. And next to that is the edit curve. So this allows you to further manipulate your curve. So you can pull it up here, add a curve point here, and then do it like that. So that's good when you're trying to make like a French curve or something for a shirt or you just want to make a really wacky pattern or something like that. Uh, it's good for that as well. Um, next to that one is to add a point. So you can add more points to further um, manipulate your pattern. Uh -huh, like that. Or if you wanted to add something here, you can do that as well. So that's what uh, those main keys are. Now, when I had I see what else is um do you guys need to know sync button totally important if the sync allows you to uh, i guess it's best to show you sync button if you have it turned off any manipulations you make on your pattern won't show up on your 3d side unless the sync button is turned on so you see we have it on and it changed and we turn it off and we manipulate it you see no change and then we turn it back on it changes. Now Marvel's Designer will let you know if the sync is turned on and off. If it's turned on, your patterns will be blue. If you turn it off, your patterns will turn red. So if you are manipulating your stuff up and you notice that it's not updating on the 3D window, you probably don't have your sync turned on. So let's uh, get rid of this. Now we can get into the fun part and that's about the sewing keys, the segment sewing. Um, I don't know how to use free sewing. I'm sure it's like the best thing ever, but I always stick with segment sewing because that's like what I know. And um, the only way I can really show you how to use the segment sewing is by actually using it. So let's go over here to the 2D window first. And I'm just going to scroll my mouse wheel in so I can get in pretty close to the, the pattern. And I'm going to move this over so you guys can see better. And we're going to make a t-shirt. So then like a t-shirt, we're going to select the edit polygon tool. And we're going to start here at the fold line. That's this line that's going directly down the middle of your avatar. And we're going to see how start by how deep we want our collar to be. So let's start right here in the chest like this. And then we're going to go up to our shoulder. 
right here. And then this is the point where you decide how long you want your sleeves to be. So I want it to be a t-shirt, so it should be about this this one, this long. Um, this is how wide you want your sleeve to be. Like, like we're going to go down, and you want it to be how wide you want your sleeve to be. If you make it really close to the body like this, it may be really tight sleeves, or the sleeves may go inside the body. So I always recommend going down uh, a square and a half from your avatar silhouette. So somewhere around this area is a good place for uh, normal just tight sleeves. Uh, anymore you'll have to go like down. But right here half a square is good. So once we hit that half a square mark we're going to go into uh, I guess right underneath the armpit. Stop there. And then you're going to decide how long you want your shirt to be. So we're going to make it like fairly long or right here about where her waist is. Our hips. Yeah the waist is here. Your hips are down here and we're going to go back to our fold line um, and if you're having a hard time making straight lines you can hold down the shift key and it'll enable the snap so you can make uh, straighter lines with ease and then we're just going to go right back up to the top the first mark oops I missed uh, first mark and double click now I'm just going to click on this little dot here because I missed and get rid of it so now we have half a t-shirt pattern. Now because we made it here on the fold line and it's folded in half, we can right click on uh, the folding line right here and then check unfold. Now before we go on to the next part, I want to click on this middle point here and I want to press delete and get rid of it. And I also want to rotate it a bit because it's crooked and it's bothering the hell out of me. Now, okay. So now that we have the front part of our pattern, we're going to make the back part. We are just going to right click on our pattern and then go copy and then paste. And now we have the back part of our garment. Now because we don't need to have a dip in our uh, back like back collar so much, we're just going to click on this dot and then hit delete. And then there we go, we got rid of it. So now we have the front part of our, our pattern and the back of our pattern. So now that we have that done the next step is to I guess to help you out and make sure you keep things organized we're going to name them so we know which part is which now with a simple pattern like this it's kind of obvious to tell which is the front and which is the back but just in case you make more complex garments and things get all over the place you may want to name them so you can keep track of what is what so what we want to do is we want to go to click on the front part of our pattern and we're going to go over here to the properties editor where it says basic, we're going to check this tab then we're going to check the plus where it says info and we're going to see where it says name and we're just going to name it front then we're going to click on the back part of our pattern and we're going to do the same thing and then we're going to name this back although for some reason every time I type in back I always type in black so <laughs> I mean back so this is the front this is the back but it doesn't really help us because you have to click on it and be like is this the front is this the back or you're going up here like front and back if you want them to show up in the 2d window you can just right click on any empty space and then press the box the button that says show pattern name or press shift in and then it will show up here and it's like front and back so it makes it easier when you're trying to figure out what part of your pattern switch all right so now that we have our stuff all labeled we're now ready to start sewing so because we need to put this pattern, we're going to select the back of our tool, or, pfft, sorry, we're going to select the back of our pattern here, this part right here, and we're going to put it behind our avatar. Now once it's behind our avatar, we're going to need to flip it horizontally, because if we don't do this step and flip it, I don't know if they change this in other Marvelous Designers, but in Marvelous Designer 2, if you don't flip the back of your garment, it's going to be invisible in Second Life. That's because you see in here where it's white, that's the good side of the fabric. And now here where it's gray, that's the bad part of the fabric, and that's invisible by default. So if we were to sew uh, the back, this part together like this, only the front would show, and the back would be totally invisible. So to fix that, you just right-click on it, and you click Flip Horizontally. And now the good side is shown on the outside, and the bad side is on the inside. So we're good now.
Now we get to the fun part, sewing. So you're going to go up here to these top tools, well, these buttons right here. It says segment sewing. And you're going to click that. And you're going to take your mouse and you're going to put it on the edge of your garment right here. So let's put the top part right here. And you notice that it highlights when you click it or when you run your mouse over. It tells you this is where you can sew. Um, it may not be red when you select it. It will be any random color. So if it's blue or something like that, don't worry. You're not doing anything wrong. It just comes up in random colors. So um, I'm going to select and click on this on edge. And then I'm going to bring my mouse over here to the other side of the pattern where I want it to sew. And then I'm going to click again, and you're going to see there's a bunch of strings that come across it. These are our seam lines that you're going to be working with. Um, you want to make sure that you keep your seam lines nice and straight. If you click on, like, let's go on this side. If we click on this edge, and then on that edge, and we click, and you see that they're twisted like this, that's going to produce a lot of errors. Because what it's doing is telling Marvelous Designer, take this edge and that edge, and then bring it together, and then twist it up in the middle. Whereas where it's telling this one, bring this edge and that edge together and, you know, be straight with each other. <laughs> so um, you don't want twisted lines. If you find that your lines are twisted, you can just press Control Z and uh, undo it and then just redo it one more time. But let, um, let's, hang on, make the cat, uh, sorry, I was getting attacked by a cat. Um, so, um, like I was saying, the, the seam, oh, hang on one second, sorry, sorry, cats, <laughs> okay, so like I was saying, um, if you have lines and they're crooked like this, and, uh, you've gone too far, and you can't press control Z and un you know untwist them you can select this button right here and this allows you to edit your seam lines just click on your lines and right click on your line and you want to press reverse seam line and then it'll just straighten your lines out for you so you don't have to just delete the whole thing and then no you can just click on your lines and then edit it so I'm going to do this and sew all the parts of the garment leaving the armhole and the neck hole open so um, yeah follow along and let's make a t-shirt so select your segment sewing and get sewing. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this is how it should look. With the side sewn, the top sewn, and leaving the neck open and your sleeves open. So once you have your garment all sewn together, we're going to start the simulation and turn this in pattern into a t-shirt. So you want to press this play button and the simulation will start and there you go you got yourself a t-shirt see not so hard is it now um i know some people complained when i did this before um with a friend that the back is super high up and the bottom is not it's not even like a shirt would be that's because the hourglass has like the perkiest boobs I've ever seen and it lifts it up higher than the back and the butt is like well it's a butt so the way we can fix this is by going to our edit pattern tool and you want to make your t-shirt the front of your t-shirt a little bit longer so I'm just gonna hold down shift while I bring it down and you want to bring it down in slow amount just bring it down a little bit further and I want to edit this grab this edit point and stretch it out and make it a little bit wider so it goes around um, quick note if you want to make your garments tighter all you have to do is grab this and you can pull it in and that makes it tighter if you want to make baggy or bigger clothes you just stretch it out a little more like that and it makes the stuff uh, baggy so you can do it that way if you want so I'm going to press control Z and maybe stretch this out a little more okay um, and then I want to grab these two and I'm going to pull them down. So you can just pull it down over the butt. I mean, this butt is huge. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm used to my avatar. She's got a very, rather flat butt. So everything just kind of goes evenly. I can try pulling it and there we go. Now this is more like a dress than a t-shirt t-shirt dress. So if I want to shorten it, you just grab the two ends and then you just pull it back up. 
So now it's like even all around than it was before. Um, if you want to pull this part in, I'm not sure. I think that's where a dart would come in handy. You, you can try. I'm not sure. This is experimental so stuff going on here. Maybe grab that and then so. Whoops, twist it. Can we find this? Yeah, I'm not sure. I always just fix that in Marv in Blender, so. Oh, this a did work. Huh, neat. Anyway, let's just assume we want it this way anyway. So that's how we get make a t-shirt. So we're going to make a pair of pants. Sorry for making you watch me experiment. I'm going to push this pattern over here, and I'm going to turn off the simulation so my computer can breathe a little bit, and we're going to zoom back into our body. So to make a pair of pants, you just do like we did with the t-shirt. Start at the fold line, and you want to go up here on the hip waist. And you want to go down to the crotch, just a little bit below it. And you want to make a L going over to the right. A backwards L. And you want to bring it down to how long you want your pants to be. If you want to make shorts, you stop up here. If you want to make long pants you go down it really is up to you so let's meet us in the middle and go like right here make capris then you're gonna go over oops and then you want to stop here at the hips right at the waist across from the first dot and then you want to go to the first dot and then you have pants and then you're going to select your edit pattern tool click on the fold line unfold and you want to zoom in and you want to delete this little middle dot because if we were to leave it <clears throat> it'll be more work for us because we'll have to sew right here and right here where we could just delete this and we could sew and just right there so I like to delete that middle one as well as this middle dot and we have a pair of pants so we have the front and just like we did with our t-shirt we just copy and then paste and then we have a pair of pants so once we have that we're just going to flip it horizontally Put it behind her, like so, and then we're going to segment sew just like we did with our t-shirt. So once we have our pants are sewn, we're going to press play, and we're going to simulate our pants. Eep. Okay, so now we have a slight problem here. As you can see, our pants are on top of our shirt, no. and we want our shirt to be on top and our pants underneath. A Marvel Designer supports a feature called layering, which allows you to do such a thing. When your clothes are current are on the same layer, like these are, they tend to fight and conflict, and they're trying to figure out what goes on what, what goes on this, and you get this conflict here. So if you're making multiple clothes on your like layering your outfit, it's good to establish what layer they're on to prevent them from fighting each other, like this shirt is doing to this pants. So what I want to do is I want to pause it for a second. And you decide which one you want on top. I want the shirt on top and the pants on the bottom. So I'm going to click on the shirt, hold down shift, and click on the belt pattern. So both patterns are selected. Then I'm going to go over here to fabric, scroll down until you see layers, and then I'm going to put it on two. 
So whatever is higher, that's what's going to be on top. This is on layer zero, so this is going to be on the bottom. This is on layer two, so it's going to be on top. So when we press play, you'll see that the shirt comes out and it sits on top. Now, I'm sure you notice that it, my simulator is going like really slow. It's kind of hard to see your clothes when it's all the same color. So let's apply a color to this so it makes it easier for us to see what's happening. So I'm going to select the shirt here and I'm going to change the color from white to uh, I guess red whoa to, to ma magenta here we go so I've got this is this magenta and it's great and that's also something that's bothering me I want to get rid of this collar I don't like how pointy it is so I'm going to click on this dot here and I'm going to use the curve tool and I'm going to pull it down like there we go nice smooth collar that's better um, my friend always suggests that I add another point here um, but I don't care I like it like this okay so um, like I was saying if you find that your simulation is going way too slow you can actually change um, how it works you can um, make lower quality lower polygon less dense garments so just select your patterns and you want to go to basic and you will change this right here where it says particle distance um, the higher the number is the lower less dense it is the lower uh, polygon it is simpler it is you press play you see it's like that and the lower the number is like 10 for example the denser the mesh will be. Usually you get to pause it beforehand and then run the simulation. I like to keep my stuff kind of at 20, but if you find your stuff way too, like it's laggy or you're like, hey, that is way too much polygon for a t-shirt, you can just turn the number up and set it to whatever you want. I'm about to teach that real quick. Okay, so now we have our t-shirt and our pants and everything is ready so we are pretty much good to take this into marvelous design um, back into blender now you may be wondering like one more thing what about the uvs um and the uv mapping and all the rest of that jump well whenever you create a pattern here these are our uv maps you were creating your uv map for your garment when you were using uh, the 2d window so yay you don't have to worry about unwrapping because this is it <laughs> Sim simple huh all right, all right, so let's go and export this and get the tutorial on the way. That way we can um, put this in Blender and start our rigging process. So we want to export our garment. We're just going to go over here to the top where it says File, and then Export, and then OBJ. And we're going to name this uh, Yoga Slink. And we're going to press M. Then check these two boxes, Unified UV Coordinates. Uh, remove cloth triangles and we only want to have cloth shapes selected we don't want this because we already have the, av the avatar in blender already so we just want to make sure cloth shape is selected and then once all that's done we just hit ok and you're done now if you want to save this so you don't have to load everything back in you can just go to file save as and then project and then name it like slink whatever and then that's it. It saves the avatar, it saves the garment, it saves the pattern. So you can just open it back up without having to jump in and do anything. Or you can now uh, you can just click that and then you just press new. And then you already have the avatar loaded in. So it's a fun little feature. Alright, so that's pretty much it for Marvelous Designer. We just gotta hop back over to Blender and then start um, you know, the rigging process. So I'll see you guys in Blender where we can begin our rigging.